Hi guys, thanks for watching, and today we are shooting from Pinewood Studios. And that's important because this is the birthplace of some of the great moments in cinematic history. And today we're going to be talking about the Cinema Line series of products. Now you may have seen back in September this year, Sony announced the development of the Cinema Line based upon the existing products of Venice and FX9 and the intention to bring the FX6 to market. And today we're going to reveal the full details of the FX6. But it's not going to be me talking about the new product. We're going to be speaking to a variety of people to understand what the intention is behind FX6. We're going to look at some of the cooler things that it can do. And we're going to find out, most importantly, what it's like to use and what it's like in hand. The other important thing I'd like to talk about and find out today is what is that Sony cinematic look? The first person I'm going to talk to is Jan Samant Legener. Jan, hi. How are you doing? Good afternoon, Davy. I'm very well. Back in September, uh, Cinema Line was announced. W what is Cinema Line? So it's a product designed for high demand videographer and filmmakers that is based on three principles, I would say. The first one is the cinematic look. The second one is the operability for professional use. And the third one, that is the reliability for professional users, is extremely important that you can count on your product anytime, anywhere, all the time. And when we launched Venice, this camera was very much recognized by the analog film uh, feeling of the image coming out of it. And one of the reasons it was this camera was developed a lot in association with fi filmmaker, famous DOPs, to really work on, on, on the output of this camera and how it works. And what came out was a super high praised image quality so you know the color science was amazing the the crystal sharp imaging crystal clear images uh, was recognized on this product and that is what make this cinematic look if to feel like a film uh, film camera and that will give this a little bit of softness in color this specific uh, skin tone reproduction as well okay so the models in this line of cinema line we all have this cinematic look you either can get it through the s709 uh, that is a mlot or you can also have a direct we call it baked in profile so uh, s cinetone will enable you to get this cinematic look directly out of the camera Okay, and you think that's going to be an exciting proposition for videographers, for content creators? Yeah, so it's all about workflow uh, and time. Uh, post-production time in the industry is super important. Time is money, as we all know, especially for post-production. If you look into two scenarios, the first one is having the color profile, I would say, calibrated between the devices. So if you're a multiple device user, you will always have the same color science between your products. The second aspect, that is super interesting is for, I would say, people that need to uh, get out their footage very quickly, no time to grade. And I would like to take one example. Mm. If you take it, the wedding industry, for example, they don't have time to grade. They need to deliver the footage as soon as possible. You can do it by simply using the s tone. Your footage uh, will be ready to use and ready to be given to your client without any grading. And that's a huge advantage in the process and in the flow, in the workflow for all the, the professional shooters. So we have Venice and FX9, which were announced. We announced FX6 uh, as the new one. And today, we're able to give the full details of FX6. So I think now's the time to look at the full unveil video. Here we go. We live in a new age of content consumption where we can choose to connect with distant people, unseen places, exotic cultures, and untold stories at will. We can change the way we experience the world. At Sony, we celebrate creators and visual storytellers and are dedicated to enabling their extraordinary skills and talent. In the year 2000, Sony released the HDW F900, making history as the world's first 24p digital cinema camera. This marked the start of a new era of digital filmmaking. Since then, 
Sony has continued to push the boundaries of technical innovation in the industry, delivering many cameras that allow filmmakers and creators to tell stories in ways that were never before possible. Our Cine Alta brand stands for this commitment, supplying the best tools, made by cinematographers for cinematographers. We are proud to support the community, applying our passion and working closely with working cinematographers to create new technology. Now, Sony brings a new series of products that delivers our coveted look, combined with enhanced operability and reliability, designed to meet and exceed many different needs of today's creators. This series is named Cinema Line. The look can deliver film-like and rich cinematic expression as Cinetone. The cameras are designed with maximum comfort and operability that is built specifically for the cinematographer. CinemaLine will give creators around the world the tools they need to capture emotion in every frame and unleash the true power of visual storytelling. Technologies are shared across the range of cameras, enabling creators to focus on the creative intent. The Venice has become a first choice for high-end digital movie production, while the FX9 has an outstanding track record in documentary production. Today we reveal the next step in our cinema line, a new model that gives immense creative freedom to a wide spectrum of visual storytellers. Introducing the new FX6. To meet the expectations of a wide range of creators who seek new high quality video expression. The new FX6 boasts a full frame sensor, Sony's versatile E-mount, a powerful Beyond's XR image processor, AI based AF technology, a wide lens lineup with more than 50 separate lenses available plus a host of leading-edge Alpha ILC camera technology, combined, condensed, and packed into this compact body. The FX6, the newest model in the Cinema Line series, leverages the full potential and advantage of the Alpha mount system, offers new horizons in video expression for today's creators. We will continue to expand the reach of the Alpha system into the world of professional cinema. The FX6 has four main features. These include impressive cinematic expression, features for extraordinary freedom, outstanding mobility, operability and expandability. The first main feature is impressive cinematic expression. Based on the expressive power that Sony has cultivated and developed, the expressive power of full frame is uniquely capable of delivering shallow depth of field for stunning video expression. Then there's the incredible high sensitivity performance for which Sony is renowned, thanks to the large pixel size and back illuminated structure of the full frame sensor. With our 4K full frame sensor, impressive high quality video expression is achieved with low noise, even in dimly lit environments. When shooting in S-Log3, the standard base sensitivity is ISO 800, with a high sensitivity setting of ISO 12800, also available for shooting in darker conditions. The sensitivity setting can also be changed to match the shooting environment. Fully exploiting the performance of the high sensitivity sensor allows shooting in dimly lit conditions at up to ISO 409600. As well as sensitivity, the FX6 achieves a wide latitude with 15 plus stops of dynamic range. And the same wide latitude is also available with a high sensitivity setting of ISO 12800, while maintaining superb image quality in low light conditions to expand flexibility of the post-production process. The beautiful bokeh expression 
and high sensitivity performance are delivered by Sony's 10.2 megapixel full frame back illuminated Exmor R sensor and the innovative new architecture of the state of the art Beyond's XR image processing engine that enables processing at four times the speed attainable hitherto. S Cinetone's highly regarded look profile, which is also used in the FX9 and inspired by the Venice color science, is adopted on the FX6 following its enthusiastic reception on the FX9. This boosts the expressive power of human skin colors with a softer tone and depicts highlights with the tones necessary for natural cinematic expression to make subjects stand out beautifully. S Cinetone quickly and easily enables a cinema look without post-production. S-Log3 is also provided in Cine-EI mode for shooting when post-production is assumed. This allows the use of unique individual color expressions. The FX6 delivers not just advances in image quality, but a host of leading-edge functions. Fast Hybrid AF provides high-speed, high-accuracy autofocus with focal plane phase detection. Phase detection sensor points are distributed over almost the entire surface of the imaging area on the sensor, enabling the subject to be captured wherever it appears in the image. In combination with the latest Beyond's XR engine, even fast-moving subjects are focused and tracked tenaciously, accurately, and smoothly. Real-time eye AF and face detection AF are also provided for robust focusing on eyes, even in difficult scenes with the narrow depths of field that full frame can provide. FX6 offers a manual focus operation, even during an autofocus shooting. The AF assist function allows creators to switch from autofocus to manual focus by just rotating the lens focus ring to a targeted position manually with intended speed. This professional camera supports high frame rate shooting at up to 120 FPS at 4K, QFHD resolution, allowing slow motion expression of fast moving subjects. The simultaneous operation of autofocus including real-time IAF makes it easier to create impressive images without losing focus on the subject. The autofocus performance of the FX6 is not realized by the camera itself. Superb AF actuators and advanced control algorithms of over 50 native E-mount lenses equally respond as well. An innovative electronic variable ND filter is provided, with Sony's unique electronic control seamlessly changing the density of the ND filter. The auto ND function lets the camera automatically adjust the density of the ND filter for optimal exposure even when the camera moves from outdoors to indoors and vice versa. Additionally, with Sony's E-mount lens with iris click off, you can change the depth of field without changing the shutter speed and ISO. In addition to these state-of-the-art movie shooting functions and beautiful video expression, another great appeal of the FX6 lies in its mobility. With a full-frame sensor and the latest shooting functions, the FX6 is in the same class of size and weight as the FS5 series. In addition to handheld shooting, the FX6 is highly mobile and can be used for shooting with stabilizers and drones. The modular design of the FX6 allows you to mix and match the parts you need depending on your shooting needs. One of the most distinctive features is the smart grip. A variety of buttons and dials are arranged to control the start and stop of recording, as well as to change various settings while holding the camera. The angle adjustment lever on the top of the grip makes it easy to adjust the grip angle while shooting. Then there's the smart handle, which has additional control buttons for improved operability. This provides stable camera work and operability even in low angle shooting and other situations where the smart grip cannot be held. The LCD panel has been upgraded to a 3.5 inch type, 1280 by 720 pixels, for higher resolution. The touch panel allows you to change settings directly from the status confirmation screen. 
in addition. The touch panel also enables focus touch control. This allows you to precisely set the camera's focus point by simply touching the LCD monitor. Monitoring is easy at any angle. And with three attachment points on the handle and two on the body, the LCD panel can be positioned for optimum viewability in just about any shooting situation. The FX6 is a compact, lightweight professional camera that offers an impressive set of advanced features and functions. It can be used in multi-camera recording with high-end equipment with the same workflow. The FX6 supports internal recording in an MXF wrapper of the XAVC format that is becoming a standard across professional video production sites. In addition, for the first time in its class, Internal recording is now possible in XAVC Intra 422 10-bit class 300 at DCI 4K and QFHD resolutions. Not only is high quality internal recording provided, but raw output from SDI is also supported for greater editing flexibility. The new dual slot supports CF Express Type A, which enables the recording of high bitrate 4K video at high frame rates and also SDXC cards. The FX6 also allows four-channel audio recording and professional accessories can be connected to the XLR inputs on the smart handle or the digital MI shoe. Despite its compact size and weight, the FX6 has the proven reliability of Sony's professional equipment. The FX6's housing and chassis construction has been newly designed. It realizes efficient heat dissipation where thermal shutdown no longer limits recording time. Despite its cooling fan, the camera is dust and moisture resistant, making it ideal for use in harsh environments. For use in harsh environments, magnesium alloy is used for the external chassis, such as top, front, rear panels, the handle, and the interior chassis of the FX6. This achieves both greater rigidity and weight reduction, further enhancing mobility. Integration with Catalyst has been upgraded to include image stabilization, clip flags, and camera rotation data to manage footage. Internal Wi-Fi also handles CBN and allows video monitoring and camera operation from a remote location. High-sensitivity, full-frame imaging delivers a new dimension of cinematic expressive power for video creators to use at will and with ease. Answering the call for superb mobility with the operability and extensibility of professional movie equipment. We bring you the FX6. Ready to tell amazing stories. Sony's cinema line will continue to evolve and develop in response to creators' requests. With plans for the Venice version 6.0 in November 2020, and the FX9 version 3.0 firmware update in 2021. Cinema Line is here. Thanks for being with us. So there we have it, the FX6. Now, Jan, and while you're still with me, yeah. one of the things that came out in that video there quite strongly was the E-mount. Why is E-mount so suitable for Cinema Line? Why is it built around that? If we look at the lens lineup as a whole, it's one mount. It means one mount for all products. So as you start from the, from the Venice at the top yes. of the range, down to the 7S Mark III, even more entry product in APS-C Super 35 format, this lens system was suitable for all the models. So that's quite unique. So in terms of weight, space and price, it will be uh, a huge advantage to work with one single mount system. Coming back to the product then, 2FX6, who do you think this is going to be most appealing to? Who's going to use this product? This little camera is packed with technology yes. inside. So the first thing is the capacity of the camera and also its modularity. The other aspect is the quality of the picture is amazing. Of course, the latest technology has been built in, autofocus and so on. We will think about documentary, reportage. We'll also think about even just 
up to sport and action, for example, because of the autofocus. So people mm. doing uh, the, vi the videos and the photos. So maybe the higher aspect of those of those shooters that does need DCI, for example, that will need the connectivity, that will need uh, the filter, the ND filter, automatic ND filter. That's interesting. You mentioned the autofocus speed there, mm -hmm. and that seems to be one of the kind of highlight specs yeah. from the camera. Do you want to expand on why you think the autofocus is so good on this? So, the issue with videography is that the autofocus system was inherit inherited from the photography, so not adapted. That, of course, has been taken into account by Sony now. And the mm -hmm. recent years, so it's since like five years, we are developing our focusing system in this so the algorithm and so on, and especially the lenses since five years of developed with this autofocus in mind. And it means that like motorization inside, we are using so-called XD linear motor that are extremely precise motor, but completely silent, that will enable you to have this very smooth focusing transition. We have many content creators recently, especially with the A7S III, but the FX6 will also inherit this focusing technology like the FX9 as well. And you can rely on the focusing and you don't need any assistance today in the focusing in video making. And that's a big, big advantage, especially in this era of one person operation. So we got the AF performance there, but Let's go back to lenses very briefly. What's new in Cine lenses? We are also now finally will uh, start the sales of a long-awaited SELC 1635G lens that is a T3.1 f2.8 lens that is a cinema dedicated lens, so a zoom lens with a very, very, very high quality lens. We have it actually here on this camera for the first time. I actually haven't seen one of those before. <laughs> yeah, so, I think uh, it's yes. the first, very first sample that we, we have in, okay. in Europe today. Mm -hmm. So it has been crafted with the usual attention to the lens lineup in terms of glass, in terms of element, in terms of uh, motorization and mechanical structure. But what is very interesting is this lens is the little servo zoom motor that is under the, the body of the lens can be uh, remotely wirelessly commanded. Interesting. Well, thank you, Jan. I'm now going to be talking to James Matthews, independent videographer, creative, who does a lot of commercial work and has had the FX6 for a few weeks now and has been working on a short movie. Welcome James, you've been using the FX6 as well. Yes, I have been using it for about two weeks. Got okay. A, got a good 14 days out of it and uh, yeah. Great camera. Especially the dynamic range for me was a big thing. I wanted to show off how nice that dynamic range was because yeah. for me, that's one of the biggest parts of having a, well, one of the biggest elements of a good camera, you know. Especially with the location that I chose for this particular film, getting them highlights and them shadows, especially at golden hour for me was a really big thing. Would it be fair to say that you, you don't care as much about what the text and specs of the product are going to be. It's more about how it helps you tell your story and kind of release your creative vision of what you want. If I've got a camera that I know I can use and I, that, that I know will, will perform the way I need it to so that I can tell my story, that's all that I really need, you know? Um, a camera that's got a million, uh, 8K, whatever, yeah. I don't need yeah. it. I don't need all the megapixels in the world. A camera that's got a specific look, that's got the right ergonomics, that is actually usable in the field, for me is the most important thing. So. Thank God the FX6 is most of those things, you know, so. Fair enough. Well, I'm lucky enough already, I've seen some of um, Sky on Fire. And so that was the project you went to shoot with the FX6. Yeah. Tell us about it. So uh, Sky on Fire was essentially a, a feeling or a, an idea that I had from when I went to Madeira the first time last year in December. There's a brief moment when you go to a certain location where when the sun is at the right height and the conditions are perfect, the sun lights up the tips of the clouds when you're actually above the clouds and it creates this amazing landscape and it just looks like the sky is on fire and then when Sony approached me to shoot a short film that feeling was still there and I knew I needed to elaborate on that feeling you know and create a story and build a story around that feeling if that makes sense. It does make sense and but you only had two weeks so uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay you had to get to know the product first because yeah. you don't want to be going off on a shoot and thinking Absolutely. how was it was it intuitive was it I don't know what was right what was wrong first off I'm a long-term user of the Sony FS5 yeah um, ergonomically the camera's pretty much exactly the same except the fact that we've now got XLR ports on 
the top handle instead of on the body and we've also got that um, variable ND that's also got auto on it now and obviously we're full frame. It's nice and light, very ergonomic, yeah. easy to attach top bottom handles, side handles, so it's really easy to pack down, stick in the bag, straight up the mountain, get it out the bag, you're good to go. Stuck it on a gimbal for a lot of the shots as well, which is obviously a big thing, yeah. especially for me. When you're traveling, you don't want to be spending 10, 15 minutes setting up your gear. I want to be there and I want to be ready to shoot in about two or three minutes, you know, max. The fact that the rolling shutter is so good basically allows me to do handheld, you know, whereas in some other cameras where the rolling shutter isn't so good and I'm doing handheld shots, especially with no IBs, that's when you're going to start to see some jello and the face wobble. And then as soon as I see that, I'm out of the story, I'm out of the, I'm out of the film, you know, it kind of takes me a step back and like, oh, I'm not, I'm, not in, I'm not engrossed in that film anymore. So for me, having good rolling shutter performance when you're doing handheld, so important, you know. It has that cinematic quality. Now, I was asking Jan about it earlier and he was trying to put into words, what is that cinematic look? I'll ask you, you're more of a storyteller, more visual. A lot of people want to, in the digital world, want to get that filmic look, um, very real, rich look to it. And for me, the FX6 is a step up from the A7 cameras in terms of that look. It's not an overly processed, sharp image. It's a very nice, subtle, pleasing image, you know, that looks very filmic. The colors are very, I almost want to say creamy, the color, especially on the skin tones, you know? Yeah. And they're also very accurate, you know, as well. The colors are really, really accurate. Okay, great. Thanks, James. I think now is a good time. Let's have a look at Sky on Fire. As I'm sure you'll agree, that looked fantastic. Now, James, let's have a talk about how you approach the cinematography of the film. I did want that nice shallow depth of field, even when I'm doing like handheld shots um, and then more harder shots to keep your focus on, you know? For me, having that, the variable ND in there, it's, there was a specific shot where we were tracking our character towards a waterfall. As we tilted up, that's when the 
the exposure would have needed to be brung down. The good thing for me was obviously we've got that auto ND. Yeah. So as I was tilting up and as the exposure increased, luckily the end, the ND just brung down the exposure accordingly and we keep exposure, you know? And yeah. It's nice because then I can just focus on the shot. I don't need to focus on my exposure. I got to know the camera enough to trust it to do that, you know. You can keep your look throughout. You don't need to change your, your depth of field by adjusting your iris. You don't have to change your ISO. But there was quite a few shots that I, I allowed the camera to do the work for me, essentially, you know. I know you usually you don't shoot a lot of your work with AF, um, so you yeah. do a lot of manual. But I know this time you were in, yeah, autofocus quite a lot of the time. Yeah, so. I, I'll be honest, I've never really had a camera that's got good autofocus. I know my lenses very well and I know how far to pull them and stuff like that to get the right focus. But this film was the first time I've ever solely used autofocus. In my tests, the autofocus is more, it's performing better than I'm performing with the, the manual focus, you know? So there's no reason for me to use manual focus. Fair enough, yeah. So um, yeah, especially with that real time eye tracking, amazing. And the biggest thing is, the face only. Yeah. So when the character's face leaves the frame, that focus point will stay. It won't then jump to the background or whatever is now in front of the frame. Character comes back into frame, you're back on the face. It's, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing for me because it, it looks like you're manually focusing, but you're not, the camera's doing it. So I was asking Jan earlier on and making him squirm a little bit about what is the Sony cinematic look, how well, does he do it? Straight away the FX6 has definitely got a completely different look to say like the A7 cameras, um, like the Alpha line of cameras. So specifically for me the highlight roll off was, it's just such a nice smooth gradient coming off from, from them highlights, especially in the skin tones. I've noticed that the skin tones are really not blotchy. They kind of roll off really, really nicely. And for me, that's a big part of a cinematic look. The image just doesn't have like a harsh look to it. It's very soft, very pleasing. And at the same time, it's, it's very accurate in terms of colors. Um, and I think as well, the dynamic range obviously leads onto that because you don't get them harsh blacks, really harsh whites. And the good thing is the 10-bit, you've got a lot of control over them, yeah. them elements as well. Especially with S-Log3, you get, you get a really, really nice flat profile that you can do a lot of tweaking with. And that obviously differentiates the FX6 and the cinema line that's got them higher bit rates to some of the, the lower bit rate cameras that are in the Alpha series, you know. There is also a little bit of a grainy, really nice filmic grainy look to it. And it's a natural, it doesn't look like a digital grain, you know, which I, I'm a huge fan of. And you also have a lot of control over that. So obviously if you want to kind of bring down some of your, bring down some of your blacks, you can then eliminate that as well. But I like to keep it in, especially for this particular film, you know. But yeah, overall, the, I just think the sensor's got a lovely look to it. But we've talked a lot about what you like about the camera, but we want this to be kind of honest. Yeah. Were there any limitations, things that you feel should have been in there or not? Um, We've obviously got the two XLR ports that are on the handle. I would have liked to have had one XLR port like we've got on the FS5 okay. in the body itself. Especially when I want to stick the camera on a gimbal, I need to strip the camera down to stick it on a gimbal, you know? And yeah. the camera flies amazingly on, on both of my gimbals that I've got. However, if I want to put audio into that camera, it, it's going to be a little bit tricky to keep the top handle on, have a heavy XLR coming out with a mic as well. Usability wise, it was, I dare to say perfect. You know? Okay, have you got projects coming up or you, ideas that have kind of started to seed within you, stories that you want to tell that you think this might be good for? I think the camera has probably inspired me to make a lot of low light, okay. low light films, you know? Even though the A7S has always been an amazing low light camera, this has got all of the, the capabilities and more than the A7S, you know? So it's really made me want to shoot some nice low light stuff, especially with organic lighting like fire. Even moonlight, I don't know, I'd like to shoot okay, something kind yeah, of moonlight, so you know? There's a lot of ideas coming out here. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, I'd say that. Oh, fair enough then. Well, I look forward to seeing that content when it comes in the future. If you don't subscribe at the moment, check out James on YouTube or go over to James Matthews Media, the links are below. And James, thank you very much for being here today. Thanks so much really for having me. Really appreciate it. Anytime. Now we've heard from James how he's been using the FX6 as a storytelling tool and to capture that cinematic look in his short there. But now we're going to be speaking to James Glancy. James is a cameraman, a producer and a presenter and he's going to be talking about shooting wildlife, a passion of his, in a different way. Now James performs a number of roles. James, I'm going to ask you to talk about your work behind the camera, in front of the camera and all things there. And for those not familiar with your work, do you want to talk a little bit about your background? 
Absolutely. I, uh, my name's James Glancy. I'm a self-shooting presenter. Um, I had a former career in the military in the Royal Marines. Uh, about six years ago, I trans transitioned into the creative world, both in front of the lens for Discovery Channel um, and then subsequently into production. Um, and all the stories I tell are, are wildlife conservation and environmental stories. But it's not as simple anymore as just filming animals. The environment is in a catastrophe, you know, um, wildlife is in dec decline. So very much the, the type of work that um, the field I'm in is telling the stories about the people that conserve wildlife, conserve yeah. animals and preserve the environment. Yeah, because you do a series of documentaries, a lot of run and gun work that we were talking about. Um, but then you got a phone call from Sony, said, OK, here's a new camera, here's the FX6. Do you want to try it out? Um, you said yes. So what did you go off to shoot? Well, I, I was obviously very surprised to um, and, and delighted to be given, given the opportunity because, you know, I have, I have two parts to my career. One is more journalistic, which is covering um, environmental stories, and that's very much run and gun. Um, it's not so much the beauty, it's capturing the story and you've very little opportunity to, to reshoot. And the other's documentaries I've been producing um, and presenting and filming on documentaries for the Discovery Channel and um, more recently National Geographic. The FX6 to me was the opportunity to do something close to home. Yep. We've been locked down for most of this year yep. and um, I thought you know this camera gives me the opportunity to go and see if I can run and gun nature, just capture what I've been seeing when I've been out on walks, what I've seen in my garden, but also test it to its capability and see how close I can get to producing a high-end natural history feel that you might, you, that you might see. And I, I'm, not a, I'm not a high-end natural history cameraman, but I wanted to push it to its limits because, it, it, yes, it's a Sony Alpha range, but it's also got the S Cinetone colors, and I really wanted to see can we bring that out in, by making a short film? I'm lucky enough to have seen um, some of the first edits on it. Um, how was it? Were you happy? Did it work? So, for example, I was driving through the new forest and we saw horses walking through a glade. We stopped the car on a, on a, a side, in a sort of lay-by, a busy part of the road, ran into the forest and just started shooting. And I literally was filming as I saw it. Um, without a tripod and it just amazed me that the ability to in, in very low light actually catch a shot that I would probably want to plan or take a lot longer to set up yeah and I and I actually adopted that approach throughout as it was in front of me that that is almost a, a more of a news journalistic approach than a, a natural yes. history approach because it's full for, um, 4k full frame because it can catch 120 frames a second um, 10 bit 422, you know, it's got everything you'd expect. I thought actually we can do more than just run and gun and, 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 and interview people. Uh, we can genuinely capture the majesty of animals and wildlife. Yeah. It's got that cinematic look to in the, in the short that you've made. I'm going to ask a question which I've asked James and I've asked Jan. Can you define what that cinematic look is? To me, I would say the cine cinematic look is the ability to turn the television onto mute and enjoy that picture just for the sake of the beauty of that shot. You couldn't do that, I would say, with a, normal, with a documentary yeah. or a current affairs news item. The story is nothing without the voiceover, without the sound. Yeah. But that look, that cinema look, can, can be viewed in silence. I think it really comes across um, in the piece that you've made. So I think it's probably a good time right now to take a look at the wilderness close by.
And there we have it, the world and it's close by. James, that was fantastic, it was beautiful. When I got the FX6, I was, of course, pleasantly surprised how small it is because, yes, it's like a, an FS5, but it's essentially a miniaturized FS7, albeit 4K full frame. And of course, with the E-mount system, I've got a number of lenses because um, I've got an FS7 and an A7S2 and 3. So it, it's immediately familiar and compatible with the ecosystem of lenses uh, and um, sound equipment that I already have, which is brilliant. You mentioned the modular design you noticed when you took it out of the box. Is that something that would benefit you in the way that you're planning or going about shoots? Modular is absolutely critical okay. because I do use gimbals. Um, on this shoot, we used a suction mount, which I fixed onto my Land Rover uh, to film to trees when we were when I was driving, but also um, back on myself. So it's absolutely crucial, I think, in this day and age, with small teams using a variety of um, different products that can enhance uh, the, the usability of mm -hmm. the camera. Uh, and because it's so small. Um, you can use it with a range of lenses on a handheld gimbal. You said you're a Sony user already, so you've got your native EMAT lenses. Um, how was the autofocus capability? The autofocus on this camera is incredible. Okay. Um, and for me, what's important about it is that it recognises animal faces. The, the autofocus on the FS6 and across the, the suite of uh, Sony camera systems is, is, is excellent. I actually, th I'm starting to think that um, understanding and using autofocus is a skill in itself. To understand or try and predict what it's going to do next. I use both uh, manual focus and autofocus focus when um, filming um, the deer and the horses. And when I was up close to uh, the horses, their movement's more predictable. It captures the face uh, and it stays with them. That's a really interesting point actually. But looking at the footage, it seems that you had some quite tricky light conditions to deal with some of the times. Deliberately put the camera through its paces in a variety of yeah. light conditions. Um, probably starting at 05 a.m. darkness into sunrise, trying to capture a range of time lapses, uh, movements between um, the shadows of a forest into a sort of open glade. And of course, the animals themselves go where they want. Yeah. Um, and so you, you do need to have that dynamic range. Um, we shot in the in S log three, and actually it's in post production where you see how the range of the camera to pick up um, the the detail in the shadows as well as the light. I found that to be it's 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 just incredibly powerful and a really impressive performance for such a small body. From across the board, having the FX6 is ideal because it fits into the the wider. Sony um, ecosystem or product, so all the E-mount lenses, but of course um, sound is important as well. Um, using the radio mics, being able to put it into um, the shoe mount and it automatically is integrated. Um, so that you, the, the roars of the stag, the water, the galloping of the, of the horses, that's all captured um, um, through your Sony shotgun mics uh, and, that, and that features in the, the how we made the film. Limitations, were there anything about the camera that you got it that it didn't do? Were there any frustrations for you? Everything I need to be, to be quick, um, to be on the money and versatile, it's in, it's in that camera. What I was missing when I was really looking for those beauty shots um, with the prime lenses, and particularly when you're shooting in, in that flat profile of S-Log3, was a viewfinder. Ah, okay. I struggled at times just looking into the monitor, thinking, have I got the exact sharpness? Am I, am I, am I focused on, on the part of the body of the animal that I want to be? Have I got the exposure right? And you know, yes, you can look at the histogram and everything, but I, I, I would have felt more comfortable with the viewfinder. So James, who do you think this camera is going to be right for? I think the FX6 is probably going to become the mainstay of a lot of independent production companies camera operators, but particularly those that operate in remote, potentially dangerous environments, such as a war reporter who has to, mm. to work in a very small team and be able to capture uh, powerful but beautiful stories. I think this is going to be uh, on the front line everywhere around the world. James, that's great. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We really appreciate it and sharing your feedback on the FX6.
Um, and at this point, we're going to pass over to Alistair Chapman, independent filmmaker, who's going to talk through a few more exciting features of the FX6. Great, thank you. So, FX6. It looks like an FS5, and many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the FS5, but this is a totally new, totally different camera that is so much more than the FS5. FS5 is still a great camera. Don't, if you've got one, carry on shooting with it. They are brilliant. But this camera just makes your life much, much easier, and it also incorporates a lot of technology borrowed from Sony's Venice digital cinema camera, in particular around the color science, and that affects how the pictures look. Now, any of you that are familiar with the FX9 will know that that has a new gamma in it called S Cinetone. And this is something that uses that technology learnt in Sony Venice, but adapted in a way that's suitable for TV and video production as opposed to film production. Now, to show you these differences, I'm going to go backwards a little bit, and I'm actually going to put this camera here, this FX6, first of all into ordinary Rec. 709. Now, to do that, I'm going to press and hold the menu button. That puts me into the camera's main menu. And just using the back button here, I can go, oh, I can go back to my paint settings because the camera has a number of scene files built into it. So we have preset looks built into the camera that we can choose. And I'm going to select ITU 709. So this is Rec 709. And we now have our ordinary TV look, 709. And if I set, set the exposure so this looks nice, what, I what you will find with a 709 if you're using zebras, a lot of people like to use zebras for exposure, when you have zebras just appearing over the person's face at 70%, then you'll get a good exposure. And that's what I'm seeing here on the viewfinder. Unfortunately, the zebras don't come out to the external feed, so you can't see it in the external feed. But you'll have to take my word for it that we have a little bit of zebras just over Christie's face here. And that looks like a good exposure. It looks as you would expect. Now, if I go one stop brighter, Oh, sorry, one stop darker, looks underexposed. If I go one stop brighter, very quickly it looks overexposed and straight away we get that nasty video look. And that's because this is Rec. 709. Now the other thing to look at when we're looking at exposure references is the waveform display. So this is something the FS5 doesn't have, but the FX6 does. And I've got that waveform display turned on right now, and it's on the right hand lower corner of the screen. And let me explain what that does. It shows you how bright the recording is from top to bottom. The bottom is black, the top is 109%, and then we have a scale uh, going through that. There are two orange lines across this waveform display, and these are particularly useful. The top one is Zebra 2, and the bottom one is Zebra 1. And my Zebras are at their current def default settings of 70% for Zebra 1 and 100% for Zebra 2. Now, when you expose with ordinary Rec. 709, the white of a white card, white piece of paper, is normally exposed at 90%. And you can see on the right hand side of that waveform, the top of those two sort of stair stepped patterns is the white bars on the chart, and they're just below 100% because they're at 90%. And that's my correct exposure, and that's when we get a good looking image. But that's ordinary Rec. 709. But to be honest, since Sony introduced S Cinetone, I don't use this anymore because S Cinetone just looks so much nicer. So let's now go back to S Cinetone. Press and hold the menu to go back to my main menus. And the camera remembers where you were previously, so I just can go straight back to here. And now choose S Cinetone. And, okay, come out of there. And we're now at using S Cinetone. And at the moment, this is actually looking a little bit on the bright side. If I bring my exposure down a little bit, you'll see that how suddenly it looks much nicer, and I would argue that it also looks much more film-like. That's the whole point of this curve. So S Cinetone was specifically developed for use in a video camera in what I would call a video production environment. So that might be something you're producing for television, something for a short film, something that's going to go on YouTube, Vimeo, things like that, where you don't have the time to grade. You want a very nice, slightly sort of filmic image, less TV-like, but very quickly and very easily. So it's been developed to be reasonably contrasty. We don't want something too flat. 
Now the other thing about S cinetone is it's a very clever curve because depending on how you expose it, you can have a slightly flatter or slightly more contrasty picture without having to go into post-production. So right now, if, if we look at this image, if I expose just a little bit brighter, the image actually becomes a little bit flatter. If you look at the grayscale bars, you can see how they become much less distinct. The white bars at the top become less distinct. If I expose a little bit darker, those bars become more distinct because the contrast is increasing. We have a slightly more contrasty image when we expose darker and a slightly flatter image when we expose brighter. So that gives us some choices while we're shooting. We can choose how contrasty the image wants. Now, I believe this looks quite nice at this exposure here. If we look at the waveform on the right hand side, the uh, Christie's face, my model's face, is on the left hand side of that waveform. If I go up and down, you can see it's that sort of fuzzy blob that there is going through the 70%, that lower orange line. And that's obviously too bright. It doesn't look right. And if I expose it so it looks nice, it's actually about there. It's below 70%. So when we're using S Cinetone, you might want to change your zebras, zebra one, to 60% and use that. So I'm going to do that. Press and hold the menu button. And let's just go back to my monitoring settings. Down here we have zebra, zebra one, 60%. OK. And now we can see that Christie's face is just touching that lower orange line. And on her face in the viewfinder, I have zebras just starting to appear over her face. And that's going to give you a really nice exposure. Now, the other way we can get a really good image out of this camera is by shooting log using S-Log3. And one of the great things about this camera is we can add lookup tables. And in particular, this camera has one lookup table that you may have heard of called S709. Now, S709 is the same lookup table as used by Sony's Venice Digital Cinema Camera. And it's a really good lookup table as a starting point for a film style production. But it is important to understand that this is different to S Cinetone. So S Cinetone is designed for going straight from the camera to YouTube, to Vimeo, to broadcast. It doesn't want to be graded, so it's quite contrasty. Whereas S709 is designed for use in post-production, that lookup table. So it is much flatter and it has a slightly different exposure range. They're not quite the same things. So you do use them differently and they don't look the same. So how do we shoot log with the camera? Well, I'm going to go into the camera's log mode and I'm going to use the status pages to do that. And this is status page number four. Just a short press of the menu button brings up these pages. And now I can use the touch screen to touch on shooting mode here and change it to Cine EI and set. Okay, we are now in the Cine EI mode with the cameras. Turn the menus off. And now we're shooting log, but when you look in the viewfinder or you look at the output that you might be able to see on, on the monitor right now, you'll see that it doesn't look like log. And that's because the camera is applying a lookup table to the viewfinder and the output. Now, let me just make one change here because we were doing something else earlier. I'm going to put the exposure index to 800. 800 EI matches the recording ISO of the camera. 800 ISO, 800 EI. And it looks a little bit overexposed because we are, because our ISO is raised. Let's just bring the exposure down so we're exposed nicely. Now, coming back to the lookup tables. If I touch the menu button to bring up the status pages and I go to status page five, we can turn our lookup tables on and off. And you can see that currently we're outputting in UHD, but if I touch here, I can turn the look lookup tables off and then now there's no lookup table on the output and what you're seeing is the log that the camera would record on the output. Come back to this page and I can also turn the lookup tables on and off for the viewfinder as well. You won't see any change, but the viewfinder now I have no lookup table on it. So I can very easily turn LUTs on and off for the viewfinder, let's turn them back on, and for the outputs independently and it's all very easy and it works really very very nicely. So how do we expose log correctly? 
Well, S log 3, when we're shooting with S log 3, white, and that isn't the bright sky, that is the white of a piece of paper um, or a white test card, should be at 61%. Now, if you remember previously, I set zebra number 1 to 60%. So that's quite handy. So if I turn the LUTs off for a minute, so we have no LUTs on. If we look at the right-hand side of the screen, under where it says XAVCI, you'll see it says SG3C S-Log3. And that is what we're recording. That's what the camera's going to record. Now, below that is the LUT that is selected, but at the moment they're turned off. And then going below that, just above the waveform, it says SG3C S-Log3 again. And that's telling us that the waveform, because I've turned the LUTs for the SDI and HDMI off, the waveform is measuring the S-Log3. So if we look at our waveform now, that lower orange line is set to 60%. My white of the chart on the right-hand side, the brightest thing on that chart I want to expose. So it's just going, just pretty much there, just going through that 60 it should be 61, so it's going to be about there. And that's my S-Log3, absolutely correctly exposed. Now, if I turn the lookup tables on, let's just turn them all back on again. You'll see that above the waveform, it now says LUT S709. So we're now measuring the LUT level. And the S709 LUT you can see that the white of the S709 LUT is around about 80, 85%, somewhere around there. Um, and this is now our correct exposure. And we could actually, if you wanted to, use the zebra number two. And if I go into the menu, zebra two level, and bring that to about, about 82%, you'll see that that now crosses through the white of the chart and that would be the correct exposure. Now, one of the things we have in this camera is something called exposure index as well, where we can offset those LUTs. And if I press and hold, or press the status, the, press the, the EI stroke gain button here, I can change that, and it changes how bright the LUT is. And that's very useful for having an exposure offset. But that's a whole new subject all of its own, so there will be another video that will come out very soon that will explain to you how to use that. This camera is an absolute powerhouse for what it is. It's really small, but it's packed, packed, packed with features. Very easy to shoot with log thanks to the use of lookup tables, and I really do recommend it to you. So there we have it. You've heard from James here about using the FX6 in a run and gun style to shoot wildlife. We've heard from James Matthews about what it's like to shoot a cinematic short. We've heard about some of the cooler features from Alistair Chapman. And we've heard from Jan what the Sony intention is behind the cinema line. Thank you so much for watching, and we really appreciate your feedback, so let us know what you think of the FX6 in the comments below. Thanks.